Today, I'm going to show you how you can protect your users from being phished. A few weeks ago, John Hammond posted this neat video showing how a Microsoft 365 account can be stolen. You should watch that video because it goes into detail about how you can set up Evil Jinx and how you can phish a user and get their credentials even if they have MFA turned on. So in this video, I'm going to show a Microsoft 365 admins how you can protect your users from phishing attacks like this. So before we start, here's a quick overview of what really happens, right? The usual flow is a user comes, uh, they go to the login page, they provide the username password and they're signed in, everything is good. Now what happens with a man in the middle attack is that you have the user being sent to a different login page. Right, so you can see here, the user is sent to a fake URL, which could come in maybe through an email or a Teams message or an SMS that they receive. They click on the link and what they see is this login page. Now what happens is Evil Jinx is sitting in the middle between the user and the actual Microsoft login page and listening in on all of the conversation that's happening. So the username, the password, they are all visible to the attacker, right? So let's see how this works in practice. I'll just give you a quick demo of how this happens, right? So, so let me bring up my Evil Jinx server. I've set it up on a Windows box. Let me start the the Evil Jinx box and you can see that I've set it up with the fake URL for Microsoft 365. So uh, the so here you can see the login page that I should use to target my users. So I send this to the victim, they click on the link and then I can see everything that happens, right? Okay. Here's a user, he's uh, got the email and he clicks on the link. Now the victim has got this email, so he sees the sign in page. And he tries to sign in. So let's say it's Diego who's trying to sign in. He types in his username, says next. Now remember, he's looking at the login, the fake page. And if I open this to the side here, you'll be able to see that a session has begun and the attacker is listening in on everything I'm typing. So let's type in the password for Diego. Now, Diego is a good user. He's using a password manager, so he copies the password, he's using a really strong password with lots of characters, he copies and pastes his password and he clicks sign in. So he's doing all the right things, he's got an MFA prompt and he approves the MFA prompt. Now you need to remember this is all happening within the fake page. And what happens is Evil Jinx now has all of the details about the user. So Evil Jinx has got the username, the password, and all of the cookies, right? So from this point onwards, even though we had MFA applied, the attacker has the details. So the attacker then comes in and he says, okay, show me all the sessions. And he can see there's Diego with his password. Uh, the attacker can then say, right, let's look at that session. So this is session 41. Let's look at that session in detail. And he can see he has the full cookie as well. So he can now copy this cookie. This is usually valid for an R. He copies that over. Uh, he opens up his own browser. Right. 
uh, he opens up a browser and uh, he tries say just to show that the user is not logged in he just sees the login page right so he won't be able to sign in he's just taken to the login page to sign in right now let me clear everything to prove that we've erased all of the, the session details let me close the browser again and restart it so we have a fresh new session there's nothing there what i'm going to do is i'm going to import the cookie that i stole so the attacker now gets the cookie puts that into his browser and we now go to office.com hit sign in and we don't even get a sign in page we don't get need to do the mfa and i'm signed in as diego so now the attacker owns diego's account he can go in check his email send out uh, mails as diego download files and he successfully fished the user even though the user has mfa right so us the admin what can we do to prevent this now I'm going to walk you through two different options that you can do. Um, there are a few more available as well, but just look at two today. The first one is device compliance. Now in this step, you as the admin can say that you need the device that the user is accessing to be a known device that's known to enter ID or Azure ID, and the user cannot sign in with any other non managed device what happens with that is there is a certificate check that happens as part of the sign-in flow and the user will not be able to complete the sign-in right so to test this out let's um, go into our conditional access policies and i'm going to create a new policy where i'll say select all users and apply to all of the applications. And the access control that I'm going to apply is the device needs to be marked as compliant. Right, so proceed with that. I'll exclude my account as the admin and I create the policy. Let's call it device compliance. And we've created the policy so now we've improved the strength of now let's see what happens when the user is asked to sign in so we can see the user is on a device that's connected to the domain and it's a compliant device so we head on over and try to sign in so let me go to my outlook and because it's a compliant device I get single sign on and I'm signed in. So the user sees a phishing link and he clicks on the link. Now you can see that he's being still sent to the fake URL and we have Evil Jing sitting in the middle, listening in on what's happening. And let's sign in as the user. We type in the password. And listen, Evil Jinx is sitting in the middle and listening on everything. But what happens now? Now you can see the compliance policy says that it didn't meet the Azure AD or the Enter ID device compliance policy. If you click on more details, you can see that Azure AD does not recognize the de device because it's coming in from a different URL. And because we have Evil Jinx sitting in the middle, trying to listen in on everything, the flow doesn't work. So what happens with device compliance is that unless the user is directly accessing Azure AD, if there's anyone sitting between 
the user's device and Azure AD and trying to listen in, that flow gets broken, right? So, so what's happening is the user is being sent to the fake URL. And because he's being sent to the fake URL and trying to sign in, the device compliance check effectively says, I don't recognize you and you are not able to connect from here, right? Because it's not the same URL. Perfect. Now we protected our user with the first policy, which is using a conditional access policy for device compliance. So that's one way to protect your users from phishing attacks by using device compliance. The next way to protect all of your users is to use very strong multi-factor authentication options. So instead of relying on SMS and voice and uh, software OTP, you can move your users to a phishing resistant multi-factor authentication. Now this can be certificate based auth. You can use any of the different types of pass keys. You can use a physical FIDO2 key like uh, this one that I'm holding here. You can use Windows Hello for Business, which is phishing resistant too. And you can use any of the modern pass keys as well. So let me give you a demo of how to do that with Windows Hello for Business. Let's first see how we create the policy, right? So I'm going to come in and define a policy that says that the user should use a strong MFA, right? So let's create this phishing resistant MFA policy. Again, we'll select it for all users and I'm going to apply it for all cloud apps. Next, we are going to use multi-factor, but instead of using any multi-factor authentication option, now we are going to require that users only sign in with a phishing resistant MFA, right? Which will be the subset of the strong auth that we selected. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'll turn it on and I'll create that policy. So let's sign in with Windows Hello for Business and see what happens. Let me go in as a guest. I'll go to Outlook. Now I'm prompted to sign in. Let me pick the strong authentication option. So here I'm going to pick Windows Hello for Business. I'll say I want to sign in with Windows Hello for Business. I'll pick my account. And you can see I'm being prompted. So I'm going to look at Windows Hello to complete the sign-in. Didn't type in a username or password. I have the device and I select OK. And I'm signed in with strong authentication, right? So I signed in with Windows Hello for Business. Somebody has sent me a phishing link. I click on it. Now here we are seeing the fake URL. So I'm not looking at login.microsoftonline.com, which is the Microsoft Enter ID login page. I'm right now looking at the fake page. So if I try to use Windows Hello for Business on the fake page, let's go through the process. I'm going to pick Windows Hello from this flow. And you can see it says signing into login.fake. I'm not even offered the option for Windows Hello because it's not login.microsoftonline.com. So now your user is at a dead end, they cannot complete the sign-in, right? So Windows Hello for Business has protected us from a phishing campaign, right? Let's look at uh, another passkey option, which is to use a FIDO2 security key. So I'm going to show you a demo of how I do that. So let's see how it works with the FIDO2 key. So I'm going to say sign-in options. Say I want to sign in with the security key. Now I'm prompted to insert my key. So I'll select key and I'll plug in my security key. Now this is a biometric one. So all I need to do is touch the key. And then I can pick 
any one of the identities that I have on the key for single sign-on. So I'll pick uh, the one that I have for this tenant. So I'm signed in successfully. So we come into the phishing link and I click on the phishing link. But now instead of going to login.microsoft.online, I'm now seeing the fake login page. Will I be able to complete the sign-in or not? Let's find out. So we go sign in options and I'm going to pick the security key. But now remember, it's the fake page that's trying to sign me in. So we go in and pick a security key. I touch my key again. And what happens here? The user is blocked from signing in again. Now we see the flow that says the security key doesn't look familiar. Please try a different one. Right. So this has effectively blocked the user from signing in. Evil Jinx listening in cannot get any of the details. Even the username is a, is a long random string that they see, right? So this effectively breaks the phishing flow. Perfect. So I hope this video was useful in explaining how you can protect your users with phishing resistant MFA. Um, I'll have more videos soon that talk about how you can set up Evil Jinx to do this demo yourself on Windows. Um, watch John Hammond's one, which shows you how to do the same thing using um, a Linux VM. And uh, it, there's a lot more detail he goes into. Uh, I'll have more examples about how you can do token protection. So even if someone gets the token, you how you can still protect those tokens um, and block what I did before where I copied and pasted things in. So watch out for that in upcoming videos. Um, please subscribe and uh, enjoy intro. Cheers.